from the ordinary search and rescue efforts that are taking place due to all the circumstances that are tied into this. One of the big ones right now, less than two hours left of sunlight. And once that sun goes down, it's only going to make their job even more difficult as at this hour, those six workers are still unaccounted for. So again, if you're just joining us right now, this all happened around 1.30 this morning. Denise, Nikki, all three of us, we were talking about the disbelief when we woke up to this news this morning. Even when we saw the video, we still didn't believe it. A part of us didn't think it was real. Even coming out here, and you can see over my shoulder behind me, what is left of the key bridge, it's hard to take in. It's hard to come to grips with this reality that this has actually happened. And the governor said as that ship approached at 1.30 this morning and it lost power dealing with some sort of electricity issues there, some power issues, somehow it was able to get the Mayday call out. And fortunately, because of that, the governor said many, many lives were saved. They were able to halt traffic on the bridge. But still, those construction workers were filling potholes around 1.30 this morning, eight of them going into the water, two of them being recovered and doing okay tonight, fortunately, but six of them still unaccounted for. And the six of them coming from overseas, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, living in Highland Town and Dundalk in those communities, providing for their families, desperate to give their families a better life. And tonight, their families are the ones left searching for answers. We spoke about the NTSB a little bit. So just to give you some context for our viewers watching at home, the NTSB brought up another accident, another bridge collapse, and said that it took up to two years for them to get some of the answers that they were looking for. So this is going to take some time to play out in terms of figuring out what exactly happened, what safety protocols were in place from the cargo ship to the bridge itself, and what safety stuff the bridge had intact, and was it enough to prevent a tragedy like this from happening? Obviously, that's not the case, for sure, with based upon what happened here. Uh, the president and vice president both speaking about this today. The president saying a little bit earlier, the federal government will move heaven and earth to do what they need to do to bring assistance to Maryland and to get this bridge rebuilt and to take care of workers at the port as their livelihoods are impacted by this. And the vice president, echoing that sentiment, said it just a short time ago. Take a listen to what she had to say. So before I begin, I will say a few words on the terrible accident in Baltimore this morning. I know we are all praying for the families of those who are missing and all of those who have been touched by this tragedy. I spoke with the governor of Maryland this morning, and we have directed the federal government to use all the resources that are available to assist with the search and rescue to reopen the port and to rebuild the bridge as quickly as possible. And of course, I know we all will stand and continue to stand with the people of Maryland. And the Transportation Secretary saying a little bit earlier in one of those press conferences as well that this was one of the cathedrals for American infrastructure in this country. It goes to show you just how crucial this bridge was for not only going over it, of course, but also one of the more crucial entryways for the Port of Baltimore for vessels to get in and out. And obviously, the Port of Baltimore, at least on the water right now, shut down indefinitely. The emotional toll that it is having on so many people out here. I'm in Pasadena. This is where I've been for a few hours now, uh, really since 11, 11.30 this morning. And we have news crews lined up all along here of the water, of course, reporting on this. But the amount of spectators that have come over, people who wanted to see this for themselves, people who are emotional because they're having trouble coming to grips, that this is the reality that we are dealing with tonight, and that also these families left waiting to find out if their loved ones will make it out of the water okay.